Thanks, guys. Love you. Good worship this morning. Those watching online, if you live in this area, uh, this afternoon we're going to go uh, speed is our speed ministry. Dennis and Cheryl uh, have uh, are hosting a little movie get together this evening. We'll talk about it at the end, but just excited about what's going to happen today. Bye, Maris. Y'all need to pray for that boy. <laughs> there are things you know not of. Are you comfortable? Cheryl, I'm going to uh, just mention last week. Last week we talked about Peter in Acts chapter 9. The scripture said as Peter traveled about the country, went to visit the saints in Lydda, where he found a man named Ananias, a paralytic, who had been bedridden for eight years. Eight, of course, is the number of new beginnings. Ananias, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and take care of your mat. Immediately, Ananias got up, and all those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him. They turned to the Lord. His, his name means praise, praiseworthy. And when your praise has been crippled, when it's been locked down, amen, it brings frustration. And last week, we said that frustration is the doorway breakthrough walks through. Frustration is the doorway, breakthrough walks through. So whenever you've been frustrated, prepare yourself and, get, and, and lean and push toward God and see what's going to happen in life. And, and I'm reading this and I'm thinking, okay, that's Acts chapter 9. Then I back up to Acts chapter 3. It's one thing to lay hands or to talk or to pray over a man who has been uh, in this place eight years crippled. But I thought, uh, now what gave Peter the confidence? The confidence is found in Acts chapter 3. Listen, our, our victories, uh, victories are so important in your life. When David faced Goliath, you remember the story. He's 15, 16 years old. When he faced Goliath, they said he could not face him. David goes out, runs toward Goliath. Goliath says, I'm going I'm to take your head from your shoulders. I'm, 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 I mean, I'm going to kill you, feed you to the birds and the fowl of the air. David said, I'll remove your head from your shoulders in the name of the Lord. Uh, when you read that story, Saul said, King Saul said to David before he went out, he said, what makes you think that you can kill him, that you can take care of the Goliath? And David shared his resume. And in his resume, he said, I killed a lion and a bear protecting the sheep. If I can kill a lion and a bear, that, Goli that, that uh, Philistine is no match for me. So when I read what Peter did in Acts 9, I asked myself, well, how did he get so bold to lay hands on a man and pray over a man who had been uh, bed fast for eight years and raise him up? And, of course, he took up his bed and walked. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. They're going to pray. Three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. Now, the scripture tells us this man is four, had been there for 40 years. For 40 years, they set him in the parking lot of the church. I said for 40 years, they set him in the parking lot of the church. And he would beg from the courts going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at, look at us. Look at us. One scripture says, look up. Look up to us because he's looking down. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I'll give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, everybody say instantly. The man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and he began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts. Again, I think the King James says, leaping and praising God. Walking and jumping and praising God. Then all the people saw him walking and praising God. They recognized him. Why did they recognize him? Because every day they passed him going into church because he'd be laid out in the parking lot. Amen. So here he is walking and praising God. So they recognized him as the man, the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. Father, I thank you for your word. We thank you for the wonder and the amazement that you are. 
We ask your blessing upon this message. God, that it would change and affect our lives as it has mine already. In Jesus' name. And everybody shout. Amen. Come on, give me a big shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Maybe may be seated. I've always loved this passage. You know, I've, I've not preached a lot on it. Silver and gold have I none. But what I have, in Jesus' name, I give you. Uh, when there's stagnation, there will always be frustration. We talked about frustration some last week. But whenever there's stagnation, there's frustration. Whenever you get stagnant. I want to preach to you this morning on unstuck. Everybody say unstuck. unstuck. Just one word. Say it again. Unstuck. unstuck. There's something about just getting unstuck. Now, I, I can say that I have flown quite a bit. Because, I, you know, in travels, I've been across the seas and places like that. And I can tell you that as, uh, it, it, I don't like airports. I don't like them. Uh, since, especially since 9-11. Before then, I could carry my gun. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, my, I could carry my knife on the plane, you know. I, I rode planes back in the day that whenever it got so far up, the light came on, everybody lit up in the back. And choke you out up in the front. You know, I remember just, it seemed like it was just easy to get on. And now, now you got to go. you got to go through security. you got to get your bags checked. you got to get this doing, that doing. And then, and then there's that, that uh, uh, stress of wondering if you're going to make it to the gate on time, if everything's going to be all right. And so Houston and Denver and L.A. and Chicago and Atlanta, when you fly into some of these bigger airports, Joseph, you'll hit them and you'll start moving. Now, I, I don't run. You know that. I, I'm kind of fused in the ankle. It's hard for me to run. But I can walk very quickly. And there are times that, that God, I was telling Bishop this week, prophetically, God made us to move. Everybody say move. move. I mean, God created you to move. Say it again. Move. One more time. Everything God makes is made to move. Amen. He, it's just something about what God did. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, Move. say it again, Move. moved upon the face of the waters. When God starts something, it always moves. The earth is moving now. You may not feel it, but it's moving. He, he hovered over the water and he said, Move. The water has never stopped moving. For thousands and thousands, the water has never stopped. It's moving. Uh, leopards move. Uh, turtle, turtles move. <laughs> Trees move. Grass moves. Everything God started moves. So when he created us, he created us to move. Everybody say move. There's nothing like being in an airport and wanting to go somewhere quickly. And, and there's this divine thing that airports finally develop. It's called the moving. I don't know if y'all have seen this before. It's a moving walkway. What's it called? Move. Say it again. Move. One more time. Moving walkway. There's nothing more frustrating than to be trying to get to your flight. And there's somebody standing on the apparatus that was made to. Are you hearing me? It's a what? A moving walkway. And here they are standing on the. It's frustrating, Joseph. You can't get from point A to point B quick enough. So when God started things, I've often said Genesis 1-0. In the beginning, God started start. God got start started. Who started start? God started start. Amen. And he's never stopped starting. So here, as we walk through this passage, and you, you got to realize that everything about God is about getting and moving. Uh, Two-thirds of God's name is G-O, go, amen? Amen, he's just about going always, and he told us to go into all the world. Man has this propensity to get stuck. We get stuck, and I'm not picking on you, I've said it before. Most of you are sitting today in the same place you were last week when you were here. We just something about it, it's comforting, isn't it? We, we like we like this certain thing about getting, and so yeah, every now and then, and that's fine with me because I can find you, right? Pastor, I mean, you know where the people are. But, but we have this thing about getting stuck in life. And, and being stuck means that we may not be able to fulfill the purpose that God has for our life. The story in Acts chapter 3, my friend, is not just a story. It's a story of mankind. It's a story about human nature. It's a story of men and women right on the outside of the presence of God unable to get into it he's outside the gate and they're outside the gate he's unable to go now listen most when we come up you don't have to teach a child to lie you don't have to teach a, ch a child to be self-centered to be selfish that's us 
Our lives were that way till we met Jesus. Could I, uh, Matt, would you help me? Uh, 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 Justin, I, I'm going to need you. Uh, Patrick, I'll take you. Okay, come here. Uh, if I could get you guys to move this pulpit back for me. Just move this, just move this pulpit back. Uh, Justin, you just stand right here a minute. Okay, just move it straight back, straight back, straight back. Let, let me illustrate something. Just, just move it back and, um, and stay there. Just stay there. Just back up and just be background. Just be background, background. So, so in the story, when, I, when I'm reading it, first off, and I, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to leave y'all here just a little bit, so just don't make no motion. Just be background. Just like your wives tell you, just background. Uh, listen, I, I find it fascinating that it's Peter and John. I don't, would you study the disciples? Look at them. Peter is the oldest. John's the youngest. When John wanted to show his love for Jesus, they're opposites. They're absolutely opposites. They, they, they are black and white. They're two different cultures. They are Yankee rebel. They, they're just separate. There's something about them. They're different. So when you see Peter and John, Peter and John? Peter and John are going to the temple to pray? It should be Peter and John. Peter and wild James, maybe. But not Peter and John. So it's Peter. So this is collaboration that God puts together. In, in church life, my friend, it's our differences that have made us powerful. This is the first miracle of the early church. They've never been a miracle in the early church yet. This is the very first one. So God sets it up. He says, listen, my church is going to be full of differences. They're going to be different to people. I don't want to go to a church where everybody's like me. Everybody talks like me, acts like me. I don't want that. We need differences. Can I get an Amen. You need to get that in your life. You need to understand this is integration, integer, amen, to integrity, to bring wholeness in. So God sets out two men opposites, Peter and John. Now, when John wanted to show he loved Jesus, he put his head on his chest. John was so tender, so kind. When Peter wanted to show how much he loved Jesus, he chopped a man's ear off. <laughs> amen. Two totally different guys. Peter's Facebook John is Instagram. All right, you follow me? I mean, these are these two guys. So they're on the way there, and I think John discovered him first. So when he gets there, he finds this man who had been crippled. Justin, I need you right here. Amen. So he finds a man who had been crippled. Uh, you're going to be Jimmy. you be Joe. Okay. So he finds this man crippled. <laughs> lame. Lame. Lame from birth. So he finds this guy who's lame from birth, and, and, and he finds him at the temple. Amen. And so, well, pick him up and bring him. So the, watch, the Bible says every, everybody say every day. Every. every day. Okay. They set him at the temple. So on Sunday morning, he was at the gate of the temple. He go, with his cup. <laughs> Be still. With his cup. Begging for alms. Now, listen. Then, that's Sunday. Now, so he, he came in, picked up his cup, held it up. Watch this. Held it up. They put money in it. Then they pick him up, take him home. No, home, guys, home. Over here, over here, over here, home. They take him home. Then Monday, they pick him up. Set him in the presence of, near the presence of God, held up his cup, begged for money. <laughs> then they'd pick him up. They'd take him home. Set him down. And then on Tuesday, they'd pick him up. <laughs> Set him down. Hold out your cup. Then they'd pick him up. <laughs> they'd take him home. <laughs> then on Wednesday, they'd bring him back. <laughs> they'd set him down. Hold up your cup. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you, if you're a really good saint, you'd probably take this guy here for a week. If you're from the bride church, Good as you guys are, y'all might make it a month. Forty years. Forty. That's a generation. Forty years. They brought this man and set him down. 
back background. No, no, not B background. Head down. And then one day, it all changed. One day. When I come to the house of God, I, I've been doing this now for 40 years. I got born again in 1979. This is 2019. For 40 years, I've been coming to the house. But I get to go past the parking lot and into his presence. And when I get in here, I got to say to God, what is it that you got for me? I know it's about you too. But Lord, I believe there's something for me today. So when I'm preaching, share with me something that I wasn't going to share with them. Do something for me in the, in the area of a hug and the love and the care. Let me see somebody's face that I've not seen in a while and let it bring hope within me. Lord, when, when someone like uh, uh, last week, last week, Jim Renfro played the drums in this church on a Tuesday. He played drums in our church in Ukaney on a Wednesday. By Friday, he passed into the heavens with his work clothes on and left this earth, 60 years old. Did his funeral on Monday. I've watched God bring his family back together. His son worked with us, Ryan. His daughter, Crystal, worked with us. His ex-wife, Tammy, worked with us. They were all estranged. And God, through this, one day, everything changed. One day. Jim lifted his hand and said, God, I need you as my Savior and my King and my Lord. One day it all changed. This scenario is a type of the church that one day the Jimmys and Joe. By the way, let me just say this about Jimmy and Joe. I like Jimmy and Joe right now, but they came and they picked him up. <laughs> brought him home. After a few months, they didn't just do this on their own. They were getting a cut. <laughs> now, I can't prove it. But you can't disprove it. <laughs> that if somebody was hauling him for 40 years, seven days a week, back and forth, and he's begging for money, Jimmy and Joe are making money off Mo. I said one day, it all changed. When life becomes a cycle, you just look down with your hand out. That's what he did. His head was down. His, he, like you walk around with your head down. You're looking down. You don't realize there's blue skies. There's life ahead. And you got to get your hand up. You got to get your head. And so Peter and John walked by. And I, I know it had to be John who said, we got to say something to that guy. Because John's got the compassion. John's got the heart. Peter got the mouth. So John said, look at that guy, Pete. Let's go talk to him. When they get there to him, the guy's begging. He's begging. Begging for money. So what he's expecting, see, many times our expectations are leveled because of our limitations. Amen. In other words, my limitation says I'll never walk. I'll never do anything. So this is on my own expectation I got. He wanted money. He wanted, because why? He got to pay the guys that are hauling him. Background. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked for a handout. Peter, with John at his side, looked him straight in the eye and said, Look here. He looked up, expected to get something from them. He had adjusted his expectations at that moment to his limitations. If God can get your attention, he can exceed your expectations. In my life, this church is a sign of an exceeding of an expectation. Amen. Ronnie, when we got out yonder, we didn't have an expectation that God was going to do anything more than let the preacher survive out here in the woods. Y'all came feeling sorry for me, loving on me, being kind and all that stuff. But next thing you know, in, and we started getting up, our lameness was gone. We were moving. God made us to what? He made us to what? Move. Say it again. Move. He made us to move. And so when you lay there and you stay there, you can't do anything. So you've got to get up. Everybody say, get up. Yeah. So he looks up, and at that moment, everything changed. His greatest miracle was on the other side of his biggest disappointment. He didn't see it coming. He didn't know what was going to happen. We don't even know at this moment that he knew anything about God. 
He probably heard whispers on their way in. He probably knew, he probably knew where everybody went to eat after church. He probably knew all the gossip in the house. He's in the parking lot. But now something happened to him. One day, it all changed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. My pastor calls it Jesus theology. The New Testament is just full of good Jesus theology. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, <laughs> I've given it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles become strong. By the right hand, reached and grabbed him, lifted him up. And the Bible said, watch it. If you've, if you've never had this moment, Justin, this is a good time for it. He went leaping and dancing. Now watch it. A leap. A leap is so important. I talked to you about the leap. Mary was pregnant with Jesus. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right, right, right. Why? Because, because heaven looked down. And looked at man. And man got started. And man was rolling along. And then Adam and Eve, you know what Adam and Eve did in the garden. Amen. Eve ate him out of a house at home. Amen. So, so here they are. They, they, they got stuck. They weren't going nowhere now. And God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, looked down over the balcony of heaven. And God said, they stuck. They stuck. One of y'all got to go down there and help them. And the Holy Ghost jumped over. And Jesus looked at him and said, hey. You don't want to always move in. Holy Ghost, move. Okay, never mind. <laughs> and, and, and so he, Jesus looked at the Holy Ghost and said, you don't want to always move. You need to go down there. And he said, uh-uh, baby. I'm Acts chapter 2. You're Matthew chapter 1. You got to go now. So Jesus jumps down from heaven, lands in the womb of a girl named Mary, a virgin, who goes to her husband and says, put your hand here. He feels it move. Oh, it's, this thing's on. She runs over to her cousin, Elizabeth. When she gets there, the Bible says that when Elizabeth, who was carrying John the Baptist in her womb, who had never been pregnant before, she'd been barren. When she got there, the baby did what? Leap. Everybody say leap. A difference in a jump and a leap. Jump goes up and down. Leap makes progress. Amen. So leap from the kidney to the heart. Background. So the baby leaped. Leaped with inside her. What I'm telling you is the baby You follow me? Moved. That baby moving. Something's going on. Because God created everything to. Uh, so, yeah, that, so John, and I don't know how much time they got to spend together when they were young, Bishop. I don't know. But here's what I do know. The next time in the Bible that Jesus and John meet, John is baptizing. Standing in the Jordan in the water. And I, I, in my mind, I see him baptizing somebody and then looking up and seeing Jesus and just kind of holding him under. And then he said, here comes the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Amen. I baptize you in water, but he's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. And there's that excitement came up. And then Jesus gets over in the water with him. And then God nudges the Holy Ghost and says, get on down there. And the Holy Ghost comes down there and hover over his head. And then God speaks, that's my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And John looking at Jesus said, you know what? The first time we met, we were in water. Now we're in water again. The scripture said when the man got up, he went leaping, jumping, praising God. Come on. Show me something, son. There you go. Oh! That's what I'm talking about. Now, you would think it would be over. You would think it would be over. You would think it would be <laughs> Thank you. God's grace got him unstuck. His miracle set up a revival. When you read your Bible, don't quit. When you hit a story like that, look over into Acts chapter 4. The priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees, the preachers of the day, came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail. Excuse me? They put him in jail for preaching Jesus because of the great stirring that took place. Verse 4 says, But many who heard the message believed to the number of men who believed, who, who grew to about 5,000. 
5,000 men. So you could go ahead and say, plus women and children. So you've got major revival going on. And Peter and John's in jail. When God gets us moving, unstuck from the frustration of a meaningless cycles, breakthrough is fixing to come walking through the door. Acts 4, 7. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, by what power or what name did you do this? Did Peter filled with the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you what that was. Peter filled with boldness. See, when the Spirit of God comes on you, boldness comes on you. And he has boldness now. And he said to them, rulers and elders of the people. Now look, if you're in jail, let me just help you. I've been there before. When you're in jail, what you want to say to the people is what they want to hear so you can get out. Right? You just want to tell them what they, I stole, uh, I got to fight. But what if you didn't do it? Well, you, a lot of times they'll even admit they, they did it just to, to please the rulers. Not Peter. He walks out, filled the Spirit. It says, if we were being called to an account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, know this. You and all people of Israel, it is by the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified but whom God raised from the dead that this man stands before you healed come on then know this you and all the people of Israel and the little country church in Houston, Texas and California and around the world it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified but whom God raised from the dead that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. A daughter came to me this week. Pastor, I know a, a church lady. She gripes, she's gossips, she's mean, she's bitter. She said, I know another man. He's good hearted, hard working. But I don't think he knows Jesus. She says she does. I don't think he does. If something happened to them, who gets to heaven? I'm so glad I'm not God. I'm so glad I'm not God. But I can tell you this. This spirit of inclusion that's going around through the church that says that no matter if you're a Buddhist or Muslim or Catholic or atheist, as long as you just believe in God, you're going to heaven. Which, okay, the atheist, atheist would be kicked out. But, but that, that ain't Bible. None of them died for me. None of them loved me like he loved me. You don't think Peter knew of gods? He had heard of the gods in Ephesus. He had heard of the gods in Corinth. He had heard of all the gods. But he had met and been with Jesus. Amen. And when he said, rise up in the name of Jesus, this man gets up. So he says, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So watch. Watch the picture. They got Peter and John. And then, and then Happy, Happy Leapy comes coming in, stands up right next to them. They look and realize that you read the rest of the story. They realize now that if we do anything to these men, we got a riot on our hands. Case dismissed. Case dis is dismissed. You know what Peter later told him? He said, I, I can't help but speak in his name. They said, you can go, but don't ever speak in his name again. Are you serious? I can't help but speak about him. He's been good to me. Stand with me. He's been so good to me. So good to me. Ken, if I could get... Where's Ken at? Is he in here? Ken, if I could get you and some of the swap leaders to come up around here in the front. Amen. I, 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 if you need prayer this morning, Ronnie, I would love for you and Angela to come up too. Amen. You pray with people. Come on up here, Marie. Amen. Come on up. Val, if you want to. You guys come up just for a second. We're going to give folk an opportunity. But listen to me. Are you going through life just holding up your cup? Are you going through life just holding up your cup? David, come on up here, please. You're talking. Are you just going through life holding up your cup? 
Go home, get picked up, hold up my cup. Go home, get picked up, hold up my cup. 40 hours a week, go home, come home. Uncle Sam takes his. Others take theirs. They're those that will make money off your inconvenience, your pain and your hurt and your sorrow. That's how they make their living. Hold up my cup. But if something could change today, being used by the Jimmys and Joes and the world system, are you ready to get unstuck? One day, everything changed. Everything changed. Those are the few. When those days happened, after 40 years, no wonder his head was down. No wonder silver and gold. Alms, alms for the poor. Head down. Peter said, I, I ain't got no silver and gold. I know what, the truth is Peter knew where silver and gold was, but he knew that's not what he needed. You don't need more money. You need to get your legs so you can go get a job. You've got to become a productive part of, of society. So in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Stop adjusting your expectations to your limitations. In my life, a country boy raised on Wheeler Mountain, limited vocabulary. I got through college because I had others help type things for me because I didn't know how to type. I was, I've been told before a fruit would never remain. I've, I've seen times when I go back home, I remind God where I'm at. I could have once said of my life, and this is why I got to keep pushing myself. Am I, am I limited out? Have I stopped? No, 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 no. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This here might look like the ceiling, but it's our floor. We're moving on top. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. moment. If you need prayer, and you say, this is my day. I, this is, look at me, all you up here prayer warriors. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. I want you to do this. When they come up, I want you to ask folk, what is it you need? And then all I want you to do is say, I agree. I agree. Because when any two or three, you agree. You ain't got to repeat what they said. You ain't got to go through a long prayer. All you got to do is say, I agree. I agree with you in Jesus' name. It's going to happen. You need prayer right now. Come up right now. We want to agree with you. Come on, move quickly. Move quickly. You know I got limited time here. Come on. I need something from God today. Amen. They're going to agree with you. It's finances, faith, friends, future. Father, in Jesus' name, everyone that is here, we pray for them. We ask God in Jesus' name that you would bless in the name of Jesus. Would you lift your hands out in the congregation? And I'm going to say it over you also. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be unstuck from the very thing that has limited your purpose on this earth. To everyone watching on the internet, in the name of Jesus, we pray for you to be unstuck. No more days like they've always been. Depression and anguish and anger and, and, and uh, loss of self-control. God, in the name of Jesus, we want to see the examples. We want to see things happen in the lives of people that will change them forever. In Jesus' name. And everyone say Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a big praise in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a bigger praise in here. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Yes, we do. That's why I tell you, you got to come to the house. You never know what's going to happen in the house. Amen. When two or three gather, when the church gathers, when the body of Christ gathers, you never know what's going to happen, where your miracle comes from, where you, where you meet. Some, I look around. I'm not going to call that. I've met, I see people in this house. You met your spouse in the house. Amen. It was in the house where it started. It wasn't this house. It was probably another house. Amen. If I get our servant leaders to come up very quickly, you'll be seated for a brief moment.
Tuesday, Lydia's house and the craftsmen will be gone. They'll be flying out. If you have opportunity, Monday and Tuesday, to come out to the ranch. You know, many hands do make light work. We don't demand nothing of anyone that is there. There's so much. Uh, now, I'll be honest with you, this week, if you'd like to help us, we just need some cleaning done. Uh, others have been coming and cleaning around. What I mean by that is just pretty much the sanctuary and the children's church. We've got to get them ready for the kids next week. And I pray you keep praying for them. And uh, I haven't forgot about this house, the things we need. I know our, our kitchen, we're going to have that refloored in the uh, fellowship hall probably within the next few weeks. You know, so that's, that's my hope and prayer, so that, that can happen. But uh, keep praying for us as we, we deal with stuff. And, and then may God calm your storm. Amen. Sister uh, Hawkins, you got to let us know when. I know we're gonna, she's, uh, Janie's going to ha have a memorial service. You just got to give us the when. We'll make the time. Amen. Because I know there's a lot of family coming in. But uh, just let, because people have already asked me, when is Janie's memorial? That, that's per perfectly acceptable. Because our memories of Janie's in this house. Right. Amen. My memories of praying over her, and all of a sudden she bust out in tongues. You know, I mean, she go rocking. You know, I loved her. We need more Janie's in this world. Amen. Amen. Uh, Y'all got, need an envelope? Everybody be a giver. Your tithe is so important to this house. It honors God. It shows you trust God. If you can't trust God with your f money, I don't know how you keep praying for other things in your life. Amen. My finances are connected to the covenant. The covenant is connected to me. The covenant keeps me going. Amen. So keep be a giver in this house. If you give it online, I think we're working on some of that. I know there's an iPad in the back somewhere also, uh, or you can give through the, the, uh, the app on the phone. Today, we're just going to meet those that want to go to the theater. Again, buy your ticket online or try to get it when you get there. We're bringing all of Lydia's house and craftsmen with us today. So I hope Ford beats Ferrari. Yeah, we already know the end of that story. So, <laughs> All right. So today, uh, November 17th, ladies, uh, live Bible study. Today after, see Miss Diane Phelan. Um, and then I'll be in the fellowship hall. Is that correct? There she is. Yeah. I knew. I was like, okay, this area somewhere. All right. So see Miss Diane, uh, any of the ladies that want to go and be a part of that. November 17th, again, today's uh, Tate and Pantry Thanksgiving food. Um, if uh, the Thanksgiving blessing dinner uh, box is to be handed out today at the New Caney campus. So if you, if you signed up for that, uh, please go out there and get that. Um, we want to be able to bless people. November the 17th, again, tonight the movies, November the 24th, community-wide Thanksgiving service. That will be next Sunday night, and that will be for the whole area of Crosby. All the churches have already come together. Pastors have been in meetings with them. And, <laughs> yeah, one of, one of the things they did say to pastor was, oh, we need to do it at pastor's church because we know that it'll be full. So don't let them be a liar, okay? Don't, don't make Pastor look bad. Uh, so, yes, that will be next Sunday. That's going to be, I think, a really, really cool time. Just the whole community of Crosby. The problem with most communities is they're divided. They have different visions, different goals for the community. If one vision comes together in Crosby, imagine what God can do. It says that when they were together in one accord in the house, that the room was shaken. How about we shake this city, amen? That we do that by being in what accord november 24th calling um all bakers uh wanted for the fill oh that's going to be for afterward if you guys bake which there's a lot of y'all that bake uh, just bring something uh next week they they cookies oh apparently they want cookies they got the cookie monster up there they could have had a picture of benaya up there because that boy he don't even want dinner he just want cookies um so there will be if you guys bring cookies um, and I'm sure they'll accept anything else if they don't. It's okay, I will. Um, <laughs> they'll take anything you give them, I promise. But yeah, try, try to do what they ask. Obviously, uh, cookies is a good thing. Today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. <laughs>